Hi everyone. In this video we'll be looking at managing privacy options and the GDPR with Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Ok, let's begin. The GDPR, which stands for the General Data Protection Regulation, came into force in the European Union back on the 25th of May 2018. In short, it's a binding privacy framework for businesses in the EU, or indeed for anyone that has customers in the EU. To read more about the GDPR, please refer to our documentation linked below. Avada itself does not need to be GDPR compliant, as the theme itself does not collect any data. But we have added a range of privacy tools to Avada to assist users to ensure their websites are compliant if needed. So let's take a look at Avada's GDPR and Privacy Toolkit. I have imported the Finance pre-built site here, and I will imagine they need to up their game with regards privacy and the GDPR. Firstly, there are a range of global options found under the Privacy tab that can be enabled to help satisfy GDPR criteria. There's an important note at the top, which explains about the cookie Avada creates if you use the Privacy Consent option. Ok, let's look at all the available options. The first option on this panel is Google and Font Awesome Fonts mode, which allows you to decide whether or not to load the Google and Font Awesome fonts onto your server. If you choose Local, the fonts will be downloaded to your server. But alternatively, you can set the option to CDN, to use the Google and Font Awesome CDN instead thereby satisfying GDPR criteria. So let's do that. The next option, Privacy Consent, if enabled, prevents third-party embeds from loading on your website until consent is granted. If I enable this, we can see more options load below. The first of these is Privacy Consent Cookie Expiration, and with this you can set the expiration time in days for the consent cookie. In the option below, the Privacy Consent types you can choose the type of embeds for which you would like to require consent. I'll just remove a couple of these, and add tracking cookies. Below this in the Privacy Selected Consent Types, you can select the type of embeds which you would like to have checked by default, when using both the Privacy Bar and the Privacy Element. I'll just select Google Maps and Tracking Cookies, so we can see this later. The next two options under this control the background and text colours of the Privacy Placeholders. I might just brighten these up a bit, with a blue background and white text. Before we have a look at the last option here, the privacy bar, let's see how these privacy consents work on the front end. I have set a range of embeds to require consent, so if I go to a page that has any of these elements on them, we will see the consent notice. Let's save our option changes here, and I will right click and open the contact page in a new tab. I have added a Google Map element down at the bottom of this page here, and as we scroll down to it, we can see the map has not loaded. Instead, we need to give our permission for this to load, which will then be stored in a cookie for the time specified in the options. Let's just give consent, and our Google Map displays on the page. Ok, let's head back to the global options. The last option here enables the privacy bar. I'll just enable that. And as the page reloads, you can see it is a bar that loads along the bottom of the page, informing your users of the privacy details of your website. So when we enable this, we also get a new batch of options underneath, which enable us to style and configure the privacy bar. Firstly, you can determine the padding of the privacy bar. The overall size will be determined by the content you add, this is just the padding around the content. I might just adjust this bottom padding a bit to 20 pixels. Then of course you can set the colour of the privacy bar background, the size of the font used, the text colour, and the text link and link hover colours. Most of these look pretty good for my example, but I'll change the privacy bar link hover colour to the button colour green. Under this is the privacy bar text option, where you can enter your custom privacy bar text. This can be as little or as much as you need, and can only be determined by your individual privacy needs. For my example, I'm just going to paste a bit more text in here, after the existing text. Next along, if you want, you can customise the text that shows on the Privacy Bar Acceptance button. And the option under this, called Privacy Bar Button Save on Click, deals with what happens when that button is clicked. If set to Yes, clicking the button will save any default consent selections that you might have selected under Privacy Selected Consent Types. 
and if it has left it no, the button will only save any preferences after a checkbox has been changed. Either way, clicking the Privacy Bar button will hide the bar. Finally, the last option is called Privacy Bar Settings. If you just need a simple Privacy Bar, you can leave this disabled. But if you want more detail, you can enable this. And when we do, another five options are added to allow you to show more information and to provide checkboxes for tracking and third-party embeds. As you can see, a settings link has also been added to the privacy bar. The first option controls the link text for the privacy bar settings. By default, it says settings, but you can change it to anything you like. Likewise with the next one, which controls the button text that shows if a user selects a checkbox. The text on the button will change from what you set in the privacy bar button text option to what you set in this option. I'm happy with update settings. There is an option for the privacy bar heading font size and one for the heading color, both of which I will leave as is. And under this is the place you can add further content to your privacy bar. If I just open the repeater row, we can see from the drop down list that there are three types of content you can add. Custom content, where you can add whatever you like, tracking cookies, and third party embeds, which apart from any content you add, will also show checkboxes for the corresponding global option selections you have made back in your privacy consent types. To save some time, I'll just add some privacy bar content in here, and then we can come back and have a look at it. Okay, so we can see the privacy bar at the bottom here, and if I click the settings link, the privacy bar expands to show us the four content sections I added, the tracking cookies, the third party embeds, and the two custom content areas. If I make any selection in the tracking cookies or third party embeds, you will see that the OK button now changes to update settings. If I were to click on update settings, it will then save those preferences and remove the privacy bar from view for as long as the cookie expiration date is set. OK, that's the privacy bar. Let's now look at another related area. If I head to pages, you will notice that WordPress adds a draft privacy policy document. If I edit this document, you will see the draft text of a privacy policy. Obviously the content will depend on your individual situation, but WordPress have also provided a guide for this, which you can find from the WordPress dashboard at Settings, Privacy, Policy Guide. Active plugins also add their own draft sections in here to assist you in understanding how these plugins collect data. Of course, if you're unsure about your requirements in this area, please consult a lawyer. Once you have your privacy policy ready to go, you can of course publish it like any other page. But if we go back to settings, we can also see here that you can now select your privacy policy page, or create a new privacy policy page if you don't have the draft. This page is then linked, for example, on the third party embeds consent form. Okay, this brings us to the privacy element. This will only be visible in the elements list if you have privacy consent turned on in the global options. But this is a useful element to add to your site, particularly on your privacy policy page. I'll just come back to the privacy policy doc again. I've split this into two containers, and I will add my privacy element at the bottom of this first section here. I will add the privacy element here. And to start, I will add a few sentences in the content area. I will also change the form field layout from stacked to floated, so the embed types checkboxes go across the page. OK, so now we have the privacy element added to our privacy doc. There are a couple of final areas we haven't looked at yet. The first one is adding a privacy consent checkbox to your website's forms. If you are using Avada Forms, all you would need to do is add a required checkbox element into the form, and add your consent text to the label. There's also a legacy method if you are using the contact page template. This is found under the contact template tab of the global options, with an option called Display Data Privacy Confirmation Box. If this is enabled, a further option appears where you can customize the message. As mentioned, this only applies to pages using the contact page template, and it's a much more flexible option to use Avada Forms. The last part of our privacy toolbox is found under the User Register element, which you might use if you have people registering on your site. If I just add the User Register element to this page, you can see the registration notice field down towards the bottom of the options here. This allows you to show custom text before the submit button if you wanted, for example, to inform a new user about your GDPR compliance. OK, that rounds out the privacy toolbox, a collection of tools in Avada to help you easily achieve GDPR compliance 
Thanks for watching and let us know in the comments if you find our collection of privacy tools useful for your site. This concludes our video on managing privacy options and the GDPR with Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.